Oh, how strange. My little, my little opening video wouldn't play then. Did you notice that? Very good morning to you. It's Saturday the 28th of December 2013. Welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom Talk. The last live show of the year, although I'll still be doing a couple of uh, short videos. I'm glad you're enjoying all the short videos, boys and girls, that we do every day. Generally, every day, well, we do. Every day, we do a short two or three minute video. Could be anything at all. Could be a bit funny. Could be a bit of news. Uh, it's been rather family orientated over the Christmas period. Those of you that watch them, if, you, if you're wondering what the hell all that's about, then you can have a look at my short videos. You'll find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, all right? YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Now, um, I, I've got to say, I, I, I eventually managed to get the computer operating to normal at around about 10 to 12 today. So those of you that are usually uh, switch on about 11 o'clock and say, oh, let's see if he's getting ready yet. And there was nothing there. There was no test tone or music or anything, was there? Uh, we didn't get it going until about 10 to 12 today. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just had everything running and, and things started running rather slowly. You know, you know, when you grab your mouse and you start moving a window over and like it, it, it doesn't move smoothly and it starts stuttering and all that business. Well, that's what was going on. I've, I've no idea what was happening there. I was a bit worried because I saw a story, um, I think, in the uh, oh, good morning, Terry H in Leeds. Terry H already sends it. He's the first message E. He's the first message E this morning, boys and girls, all the way in Leeds. Good morning, Terry. Hope you were. Hope you had a nice Christmas, sir. I saw on the uh, internet a story uh, yesterday in one of the papers that there's some. Um, oh no, what's they call it? Uh, a ransom virus or something. Ransom virus. Apparently, you turn on your computer, and then it tells you that everything on your computer has been encrypted, and it won't be unencrypted. Is that, is that the right word? Unencrypted. Is it? <laughs> it won't be unencrypted until you send them X amount of money. And then you're supposed to send them the money and then they do something at the other end and your computer is no longer um, uh, encrypted and you can see everything again. Now, apparently, according to the news stories, if you send the money, generally, it does work. They then do something to your computer and it's unencrypted. But isn't it outrageous, isn't it? And the way they get into your computer is the same way as virtually all viruses get into your computer, boys and girls. They open, or, or the person at the other end, i.e. me, I would open an attachment as sent by the infector. Is that a new word, infector? I have been infected, boys and girls. Inf I haven't been infected, fortunately. I thought I was this morning infected, boys and girls. I thought I'd been infected by one of these viruses. But the, the way they get into your computer, all these generally viruses, is that they send you an email and there will be some sort of attachment to it. And it'd be something like, open this, urgent. Or um, a zip file. That's that's a good way of doing it. A zip file. Sorry, I've got a little, little thing. I've got a little sore on my lip today. And I got that from, um, there was a bit of skin. Do you know what I mean? You know when you feel a bit of skin? I thought, well, I'll pull that off and I've got my rotten teeth. Got the, got the skin of my, my eye like that. And it ripped a hole in my lip. And now it's, it's, it's kind of scabbed over a bit. Not very pleasant to look at. Look away. Look away. You don't want to see my ailments and illnesses, do you? Back to the story. So uh, do not ever open zip files or attachments to emails. Certainly banks... Banks and, and money type things will never send you things like this. It's OK to open an email, right? It is not OK to click on an attachment to an email. Never open them. It will be something like, you know, important, please open this quickly or uh, your attention required immediately. It's, it's generally something like that. Never, ever open an attachment to an email. Even sometimes... OK, it might have looked like it's come from a friend. You know, you might have an email from me that has an attachment. Well, I wouldn't send you an email with an attachment, but perhaps you don't know that. 
And so it might say from Chris Reardon, open this immediately. Well, that may be just a, that that may be you probably have got that without even the person's name on the top of the email realizing that he sent it. The computer has done it all automatically. They have lives of their own, boys and girls. Computers have lives of their own. Do you ever wonder what they're thinking about computers? You know, sometimes you're in the office and it's all quite quiet or in the office or, or at home or something like that. And you've got your computer running and it's all very quiet. And then suddenly it starts chattering to itself, doesn't it? <laughs> Shut up. It starts chattering. What is it talking about? Yes. You see, it's thinking evil things to send you, like viruses. Never, ever open attachments on those uh, on those viruses, all right? Uh, Marge is with us this morning. Good morning, Marge, in Oklahoma, who sends a wonderful email today. We shall be, re- shall be reading out uh, a little bit later. Uh, what else we got here? We got Marge has sent us. Marge has had trouble with coyotes in her backyard. Coyotes, and they go, oh, yeah, she sent, she sent a little, uh, a little um, uh, audio thing of a coyote making a noise. Let me see if I can bring it up. <laughs> I love it. I love that noise. But Marge, are you sure that's the coyotes and not you making that noise? Actually, it sounds like my sister. My sister makes all sorts of animal noises. She really did. If you watched, um, was it yesterday's, might have been yesterday's short video, Friday's short video, you would have seen my sister dressed as a cow. Moo! Moo! She was dressed as a cow. Did you see? You missed it, didn't you? I told you where to find them. All those short videos are at youtube.com forward slash Chris Weird UK. You might come now across a couple of adverts on there. Okay. Uh, They've started putting adverts on my little videos. All right. Just to warn you, you can always click that skip now thing or whatever they do on YouTube and uh, what have you. Now, talking of emails, I just want to read this uh, short one out. From a dear friend of the show who hasn't been with us for a while. Um, it's from Robert Pellis in Iceland who says, Dear Chris, a very merry Yuletide. I hope all is well with you and Katie. Katie the cat is at this moment curled up asleep on my bed. She is resting. She's had a very hard night's worth of sleep. And she's now resting again. Uh, Katie's been very naughty in the last couple of days. She's been waking me up at like 7am. I don't know why. Meowing loudly. Meow! 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 And then if she gets no response, she then jumps onto the bottom of the bed where she had been, you know, a few minutes ago. I think, I, I think generally, uh, I think she wants to be fed, really. Uh, I ought to, Maybe I should put two... She seems to be eating more recently. Why would that be? Katie the cat is eating more. And she's making an awful lot of noise, waking me up at seven o'clock in the morning for breakfast. What a cheek. Everyone knows DJs don't get up until nine o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much. But yes, she is very well. Um, Robert says, plenty of ruddy snow and the arthritis to keep me nice and grumpy. Take care, Robert. Oh, you haven't got arthritis, have you, Rob? Oh, well, it's funny you should mention that. This is one of those old things, isn't it? Arthritis, Robert. I'm getting stuff as well, as you know. I get bad feet. Sometimes um, sometimes it's hard to move my head up from the pillow. You know, when you... Oh, oh, you think to yourself, oh, God. And all that business. I've still got trouble with my feet. That's going on and on. I'm going to make another appointment to see the doctor soon. So I've had that problem now for nine months, uh, Robert. Oh, you probably don't know. Yeah, uh, the sides of my feet are painful. And then just below the ankle, there's like a ripping feeling sometimes. Oh, it's awful. Awful. Funnily enough, if I go for a long walk, it seems to subside. It's mainly at its worst when I get out of the car after a journey. Oh, I wonder if it's anything to do with pushing pedals up and down in the car. There's a thought. Yeah. yeah, I suppose it could be something to do with that. So, yes. And um, yesterday, 
Uh, yesterday, uh, my best friend Ron, I got a phone call from him. Um, oh, what was it now? No, no, sorry. Uh, Thursday. Thursday, Ron was supposed to come around. I got a phone call from him. He says um, he, he had a really bad back and it was really excruciatingly painful. And I said to him, well, wh- when did that happen? He said, when I got out of the car. Now, uh, 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 Ronnie, did I say Rob? Sorry, Ronnie, he's got a, a BMW car, one of those... Uh, flash things with a fold down roof and all that all that old business one of the most uncomfortable cars i have ever sat in in my life i've got to tell you that and getting in and out of it i find a great effort it really is because it's low down you see and you've you kind of fall into this seat and i've never anyways getting rid of it soon within the next few weeks i'm so happy looks nice feels crap it really is uncomfortable. Uh, BMW, I don't, I don't know. They're all different numbers, aren't they? Yeah, you know, don't get me wrong. I've I've been in BMW cars in the three series. Really, the most comfortable car in the world. Have to say it. I had one myself about about um, twelve years ago. It was a really old one, really old, and clapped out all the um, you know the seats. All the material had worn down on the top, and it was just like foam. You were sitting almost on bits of foam. I mean, it wasn't that bad, you know, just holes in the seats. It was so comfortable. So co- Span it round on the ice, though, didn't I? I was only doing 30 mile an hour. Span that round on ice one winter and uh, <coughs> wrote that off. But it was the most comfortable car I ever had. It wasn't dear either because it was like 10th hand, you know, it was really old. Very, very comfortable car. This one, he's had that two years. I've never been comfortable in it. And I tell him, I'm sorry, I tell him. Because he's a bit flash, isn't he, Aaron? You know, he is a bit flash. It is the most uncomfortable car in the world. And I said to him, I bet that's to do with your car. Getting in and out of that car. Anyway, so what happens, he's gone to, um, yesterday, he, 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 he's, I've got to go and see someone about my back. He was in tears. It was so painful. Okay. And he was getting tingling in his feet <clears throat> or in his toes. So, um, uh, there, there wasn't, he didn't want to go to, um, accident and an emergency, you know, casualty. Um, uh, so he, uh, he went because he thought they all they would do is give him painkillers and send him away, you know. Um, so he thought, well, I want to go and see a foot specialist. Now, uh, the National Health Service has, of course, got these specialists, but you've got to wait, you know. And here we are, the day after Boxing Day. You ain't going to see anyone. So he opted to uh, privately go and see someone, which cost him forty-five pounds. And he started moaning about that. You know, forty-five pounds I've spent. I said, money well spent. You know, you can't put a price on your health. You cannot put a price on your health. So he went to see this bloke, forty-five quid, um, who told him he had a slip disc. He slipped a disc somehow. Yes, I said. Well, what did he do? He said, well, he gave it a bit of a massage, and he had this heat radiating thing that he put on top of it for a while and it was in there for about an hour and I said well uh, will you go to casualty now he said no because he told me exactly what I thought if I go to casualty they give me a load of painkillers and send me away apparently this has to go back into position on its own naturally they told him to drink lots of fluids um don't know why that would affect your back, but there we are. That's what the bloke told him. Uh, drink lots of fluids and make sure you sit up straight. You know, the posture is very, very important, isn't it? You know, I mean, we all do it. Don't we? We, sit, we sit in that like, armchair, <laughs> slouched like an old potato, watching our episodes of Doctor Who. Oh, let me tell you about the Christmas episode of Doctor Who in a minute, in a minute. Not necessarily what went on in it, but how difficult it was to me to watch the bloody thing. Anyway, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, uh, yes, to drink loads of flows and to sit and sit up straight like that. So he's he's telling me that like, because he's come round to me after the doctor thing, right? And I said, I told you it's that blooming car. He said, it's not the car. I said, I bet it is. It's got to be the car that's done that. It's so difficult getting in and out of this flash fold down roof. Very pretty, you know, jealous if you look at it, BMW. I would never want one of those. So uncomfortable. I don't like to go on about it. You get a 3 Series, beautiful. Oh, lovely. 
I'd love a free series BMW. You can't have anything like that in London. You know, you start turning up like in a flash BMW to work and you'll soon be hated. <laughs> You're much better off to have a little old Toyota like, well, a new little Toyota like me. No one bothers. Although I lost the mirror to that this week. Well, not the mirror. You know the back of the mirror? Do you remember about a year ago, I told you the back of the Toyota mirror, what's that called? You know that bit on the back? <clears throat> so you've got the mirror at the front and then this bit of plastic at the back. I told you I'd scraped it and they wanted £70 for a new one. And I told them, no, don't bother. And I stuck it on with a bit of tape. Well, I've lost it. <laughs> it's fallen off somewhere. So disappointed. I'm going to have to forced to buy another one now, aren't I? All it is is a bit of white plastic on the back. How much are they going to charge me for that? Probably about 70 quid. Thieving bastards. All of them, dear. Thieving bastards. <laughs> anyway, so I shall get that. Back to the story. So he's come round here and told me all about this. And he's sitting there, you know, all straight like this. So I said, do you want a cup of tea? He said, yeah, I'll have a cup of tea. He said, it's really painful. The only thing that seems to stop the pain is, he said, is when he stands up straight. And that reminded me of that sciatica I had a couple of years ago when I was on uh, Norfolk Island in Australia. No, it's about three years ago now. Oh, that was awful. I had it twice. Uh, six months before I went to Australia and then while I was actually in Australia. And it was like a, a dull... It wasn't a sharp pain. It was a, a, a very annoying, dull pain going down the side of my leg. It was actually in the calf muscle. That's where the pain was. It went on for weeks weeks and weeks and weeks and it didn't matter when it was in bed or sitting down or driving anything the pain was there it's awful the only thing that seemed to get rid of it would be to stand on it or go for a walk you know and you can only stand up for so long before your legs start aching again can't you dear me it's all terrible good morning to uh, ben parker good morning ben Nice to hear from you. Are you working tonight, Ben? Or are you going to come to the Lorry Arms and be their second customer? <laughs> oh, Ben, we, we bang away at that one. Please come down if you're free. I'm desperate. <laughs> ben says he's getting oh, it's getting old, dear. That's what the problem is. I'm the same. Have you got lots of pains, Ben? What other pains have you got, apart from me being a pain in the neck? Oh, I bought a new camera, Ben. One minute. We bought a new video camera. Let me get the box. <clears throat> yeah, I got this in the sales. There's another story behind the sales I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Oh, by the way, you can... Um, I better put the, uh, uh, the phone numbers and all that business up. One second, I haven't put that up yet, have I? Uh, boom. Text, there it is. And enable text, there it is. OK, uh, if you're with us live... And how do you know that? Well, uh, have a quick look at the clock. It's December the 28th, 2013, and it's just coming up to 20 minutes past 12 o'clock. If that's the time where you are now, you are with us live. And you can indeed join in live by three methods. Either email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Use the email as well if you're watching a recording of this show. OK. But if you're with us live, you can join in by Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. OK? C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's the Skype username. Just click call and you can speak to me live on the show by the red bat phone. The red bat phone. Or you can phone in. We have a local London number, 020 8133 6358. 020 8133 6358. So here's the, here's the new camera, Ben. I have a Canon Legria HFR47. And with that, I'm recording today's show. That that will be the recording. This is not the camera that I use live. There's actually two. There's actually three cameras in front of me today. Okay. There's the little webcam I use, which is how you watch the show live. That is the new Legria HFR47. 
which is the new uh, recording camera and the old recording camera is recording me as well in case I can't get to grips. Oh my god! Did you see that? My mirror ball just fell off the wall! Wow! That was scary, wasn't it? My God! What the hell happened then? Christmas trees on the floor, mirror balls falling over. Blimey! That was scary. What's happened here then? Jeez. I could have been underneath that. I could have died on air. How does that happen then? I think the wire is just um, disintegrated at the top there. Cool, blimey. Well, you couldn't make that up, could you? You couldn't have rehearsed that. That was lucky. What a good job I'm not seeing under it. Anyway, no more mirable for the rest of the show now. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that scared me. That good, you know, I've got airs all up the back of my neck now. Oh, that was really awful. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Thank you. It's falling apart around... Actually, there's a venue that I work at that's falling apart around me at the moment. Anyway, so that's it. The, the Legria HFR47 is the new video camera, which I'm using to record the show. Um, actually, I've got to be honest, Ben. I'm looking... I'm, I'm kind of looking at myself in the mirror now, and the picture is not as good as it is on the other... on the old um, uh, Canon uh, FS200. That was the old uh, camera, which I'm also recording on today. The colours are certainly not as good. Uh, I don't know if that's a setting or something um, uh, that I've got to try, but uh, I shall have to have a look at that, Ben. Yes, I think it must must be a setting on there that I've got to adjust, or whether or not it's just the screen. And when I when I put it on the computer, it might look all right. I've done that before. You know, when you record something, you look at the little screen on the camera. Oh, it don't look quite right. And then yet when you load it into the computer, then it's all all right. You know, very scary that. Uh, let's see, Ben, did you uh, reply to that? Yes, you did. Uh, ben says, "Oh, he's working tonight." Oh, Ben. <laughs> just me again then <laughs> Ben I can't read that comment out dear thank you yeah so you might get a phone call from me later Ben <laughs> when I have <coughs> when I have video issues or something like that I generally ring Ben and here's the one that uh, helps me with all the video stuff although you weren't able to answer the last question got to tell you Ben I have made a short test video already and um and uh, in MP4 format, and that I was able to drag straight into Adobe Premiere Elements, and I saved it, watched it, and it's no longer jerking. So maybe that's something to do with needing a new camera, I don't know. Um, yes, where were we? Oh yes, sir, if you want to call us, uh, the Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, uh, and indeed the phone number, 020 8133 Terry H says, on the subject of the coyotes... <laughs> He wants to know, is that what Marge sounds like when she wakes up? <laughs> is that what Marge sounds like when she makes up the coyotes calling? Um, Terry says, I pulled my back last week. It was He was in terrible pain. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. My um, sister's husband's brother uh, has got a bad back. What He used to work in a kitchen. Once he bent down to pick up a can of baked beans. Not a large can, a normal can of baked beans. His back went and it was never right since. Awful. It was just awful to be in constant pain all the time. It really must be. Uh, Terry, Terry found it very funny when the ball dropped off the wall. Well, I didn't. Scared the life out of me, that did. Oh, God's sake. Oh, yeah, I thought you'd find it as funny as well, Wendy. Yeah, you'd love to see me suffer in the studio, wouldn't you? What's going to happen next? Maybe the ceiling will come down next week. I don't know. Or people will start firing an air rifle through the window. Yes. Um, Marge says, 
Why was your sister dressed as a cow in one of the videos? Um, it's called fun. She was having fun. Um, so there we are. Good. Now, uh, I was going to tell you about that camera. Yes, I got that on the Boxing Day because I, I was looking for a camera. There was a, a specific camera that I had in mind, actually, and I was watching it, and it was on. It was priced at three hundred and forty-seven pounds. Okay, which is a, a, a slightly dearer camera than than the one I had already. And I watched it for a while, you know, a few few a couple of weeks. And I thought, well, uh, hopefully in the sale, I'll get this for about 300. Well, Christmas Eve, blow me down. It went from 345 pounds to 429. What a swizz, honestly. It's outrageous, isn't it? They put it up 80 quid. This is Amazon. 80 quid on Christmas Eve. And I thought, I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to put that back down to £345 and say it's a sale item. You thieving people. Thieving, thieving people. Anyway, so I went on to uh, Facebook to mention this. And then I think it was, was it Jerry? Just a minute, let me see who it was now. Jerry, someone advised me. Uh, we've got a few more people with us. I'll read it in a minute. I'll read your messages in a minute, kids. All right. Jerry, I think it was Jerry. Oh, I can't find it now. Uh, uh, um, what have I got to click on there? Oh, so many clicks to do. So many clicks. Here we are. That's it there. Was it Jerry? I want to thank people when they, when they help me. I like to thank people. No, I can't find it now. Oh, well, I, I think it was Jerry... Who says, no, you don't need to spend that much money. Get this one. Which is actually the one that I bought, which eventually I got for £199 at Curry's. Because we went to Curry's in Lincoln. My sister's in Lincolnshire. That's where I spent Christmas. Um, so I went up there um, on the Christmas Eve. And on Boxing Day, uh, we, we generally go to a little bit of shopping on Boxing Day. Although I went, I didn't go with my sister's shopping. Oh, it's a nightmare. Oh, she's a nightmare going shopping with. She looks in every bloody shop. Every single shop she has to go in. And it does my brain in. And what happens is we leave. We generally leave about 11 o'clock. And we get to the shops. Uh, do a bit of shopping. Uh, then we have something to eat. And then the shopping carries on. And we, we don't get home till about half past five. In the, in the afternoon, and that's whenever I go up there. So now I don't go shopping. I tend to do my best not to go shopping with my sister. She is a nightmare. So, uh, fortunately, my nephew and his wife and their two children, that's Gary, Stacey, um, Evie's the little girl, who's absolutely adorable little girl, and they've got a baby, Harry, now, who gave me loads of smiles. I got loads of smiles while I was there from Harry the baby. And they said they were going Boxing Day. I said, well, what time are you leaving? Oh, well, we want to leave by 10 o'clock. And I thought, oh, brilliant. But we don't want to be back late. I said, well, what time do you want to be back by? Oh, 1, one thirty ish I said, perfect. I'll come shopping with you. And my sister kind of looked up and I thought, no, I'm not going to No, no, I'm not going. Because I've told her before. I've told her before when we, we go shopping... And I've said, are you going? Are we going out all day? No, no, we won't be out all day. And then sure enough, we come back about half past five, six o'clock. I can't bear it. You know, I am one of those people. I know what I want to buy. OK, want to buy a pair of jeans? Go there. Want to buy a T-shirt? Go there. Want to buy an item, electrical item? We'll go there. And I knew I was going out for a camera. Nothing else. I knew the model. I knew what I wanted. That was it. In, out. Quick as possible. Stacey and Gary wanted to pop to Tesco's to get a few bits and pieces, so that's it. So that's what we did on Boxing Day. Um, left the house, it was actually a little bit later, around about 20 past, it was about 20 past 10. Um, we went to Tesco's first, which was closed. Tesco in Lincoln was closed on Boxing Day. So she couldn't get her bits and pieces there. But then we went to, um, Jimmy came with us as well, my nephew Jimmy, he's 16. We dropped him off because he wanted to go to a football match. Yeah, football. Yeah. How boring is that? God's sake. And I said to him, what is the excitement with going to a football match? 
sitting there watching 24 puffs kick around a ball. And, oh, they're not puffs, he says. You're yeah, not puffs. Yes, they are. Poncing around on a field, kicking this little ball, showering each other with kisses every time they get the ball in a, in a goal. Uh, it's boring. And then fighting outside the match afterwards. I mean, Lincoln was awash with police. Awash with police as we were driving through. Anyway, so he got out of the car um, while we were in transit in between. Well, obviously, we stopped the car to let him out. Into, we could have just chucked him out of the door, I suppose. That would have been quite funny. You ready, Jimmy? Up, oh, whoosh, out the door. <laughs> so he got out halfway between Tesco's and Curry's, where I was going to get the camera. And um, off he went to the football. And as we drove off, uh, Stacey said, because he's 16, what, what would we do if we saw Jimmy just walk down, down the street five minutes later with a can of lager in one hand and a fag in the other, smoking away? And I, I said to her, laugh. <laughs> so we got to Curry's um, for that thing. I'd already reserved it online, because you can go online and reserve it. It's actually my sister did it for me. Because I couldn't work out what to do. So reserve it online. So I went to the reserve, click and collect, or whatever it's called. And uh, hello, da, 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 da. oh, I showed her the. And of course, she's looking in the shelves. No one's bothered to take it off the shelf, have they? It wasn't ready. I had to wait at least three minutes. Three minutes. Mind you, it's better than waiting at the normal checkout. Christ, you should have seen the queues there on sat on the on Boxing Day. This this shop was packed, absolutely packed, Curries. <coughs> They do, <coughs> they do seem to do a good sale in there. So I was quite pleased about that. So she went to the shop. I've got it out the door. I went, and here I am using it now. As I say, uh, Ben, I don't know if you're still with us. The picture at the moment doesn't look as good as the picture on the old camera. But we'll see what happens when I when I eventually uh, edit it and uh, put it together. Oh, Ben's there. Chris Ben says, Chris, remember, men buy things. Women turn into religious experience. Oh, it's a nightmare. She is a nightmare, my sister, to go shopping with. Don't want to go shopping with her again, ever. Thank you. No, thank you. Love her to bits and all that. Would you like to see what my sister got me for Christmas? Regular listeners and viewers of the show will know that I requested from my sister something she made. She has started making all these different cooking things. And my niece as well. And I have it here. I haven't even opened it yet. I've saved this to bring to you first. Just a minute. Oh, it's heavy. Here we go. My sister has made me all these jars of different things. I've got homemade marmalade, and I've already had one of those. Not out of here, but she sent me a large one later. She makes the most beautiful marmalade. She has made, for the first time ever... Tomato ketchup. Now, I've got to tell you, um, I get through a largest bottle of tomato ketchup will last me about five meals. <laughs> I, do, I do tend to soak various meals with tomato sauce. I do. I've got strawberry jam made with herself. Uh, what's that there? Hang on a minute. Blackberry jam. And lemon curd. She has made all these things herself. And fudge. Now, she has told me... This, this is like vanilla and chocolate fudge. She has told me... That is the first time she's made the fudge. And I'm to tell her what I think. So, how do we open this? Just, should I just put a whole... Oh, it seems such a shame to open this. It seems such a shame to open this. Just put it in a little basket... With a bit of yellow paper under, and it's all very presentable and very, very nice indeed. Let's just open the cellophane. I'm going to try a piece of my sister's fudge now, the first time ever. By the way, boys and girls, is the sound all right today? I think I, 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 I traced the sound problem to a dodgy switch on the mixer, so I've just used it over to another. She's got chocolate fudge here. That must be the little stars, little stars of chocolate fudge. Oh, it's... Oh, it smells like... Do you smell your food before you eat it? I always do that. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That is so nice. What a shame I can't pass any down the line to you. It's all mine. Mine, 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 mine. 
But my favourite is vanilla fudge. Now let's see how she's got on with this. Ready? Oh. That taste. Mmm. Oh my god, that is so delicious. Nothing more that says. Oh. Mm. Oh, I might have to just stop the show now and come and eat the entire packet of fudge that she's just made me. That is absolutely delicious. I'm very pleased with that, sis. And what a wonderful gift to get something from someone that they have made from scratch. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, sister. Although she won't watch this. She, she, can, just about, she can just about watch the short videos. She really can. To see, she's a wonderful girl, my sister. But not to go shopping with. Please do not go. Oh, she'll be all right with you, uh, probably Wendy. I reckon Wendy's a bit like that. She goes in and out of the shops all the time, doesn't you, Wendy? Not actually buying anything. Oh, oh, look, oh look at this. And she, oh, Debenhams. She loves Debenhams. Don't go in Debenhams with my sister. You know, if we're going to... Where are we going? To, we'll just go for something to eat upstairs. Of course, on the way to the upstairs restaurant, where do we have to go? Through the bloody women's department. Oh, oh, look at this top, Chris. Do you like this? No, we're going upstairs. Walks a bit. Oh, oh, that's a nice bra. Oh, God. Please, let's get out of this bloody shop. Generally, what I do, if she goes in Debenhams up in Lincolnshire, <laughs> I tell her, right, I'm going in, in, in Costa Coffee down there. I'll meet you in half an hour. 45 minutes later, I'm on my third cup of tea, you know, still waiting for her to appear. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't stand it. Can't stand it. Um, ben, I can't read these dodgy messages that you keep sending through. <laughs> You are naughty, Ben. Uh, Wendy says, uh, yes, it was Jerry Green, RE the camera. Yes, I thought it was Jerry. Um, sound is, is is working now. Yeah, I, I, I found that problem then. So it was definitely that dodgy button there. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, oh, good morning to Lizzie Drip. Morning, dear, who is so jealous of you with that fudge. I tell you what, tell you what, Robin. Hang on a minute. I'll tell you what, Robin. Just for you. I'll eat another piece. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. What a shame. I could have bought these in last night. Lizzie and I. Sorry, Robin and I. Uh, Robin is a drag queen. Lizzie Drip is his drag name. And when he comes to work, <clears throat> so I might be DJing somewhere. And uh, Robin will be doing the drag show. And he comes in with bags and bags of costumes. I think a lot of people realise the work that goes into uh, being a drag queen. People have said to me before, oh, why don't you do try drag? And I can't be doing that women's clothes thing. I'm sorry, dear. You know, not in public anyway. Sometimes on my own, I might try on a pair of, you know, fishnet tights or something like that. But not in public. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do that at all. And um, <clears throat> uh, bags and bags of stuff. And he came in last night to somewhere where we were working. And it just wasn't busy. So I eventually went home without actually doing the show. Uh, which was a shame. He did get a bit busier, Robin. But only about 45. 45. It wasn't, wasn't a busy night last night. On the other hand, I don't think they were expecting a busy night, uh, to be honest. Uh, because of the, the whole Christmas thing or whatever. Anyway, I did enjoy that extra piece of fudge there, uh, Robin. I hope you in, hope you enjoyed me watching it. All right? Have a little look at his uh, website. Um, Robin's website, lizzydrip.com. I think I'm right in saying lizzydrip.com, OK? Uh, Marge says um, she thought the cow meant something. What, in, in, in the short video last week? No, the cow, when my sister dressed as a cow, didn't mean anything. She was just having a bit of fun, Marge. Just a bit of fun. Um, UK football is not really football to me, says Marge. Here they call that soccer, not football. Yes, uh, in America it's soccer, isn't it? Um, 
uh, the sound is good. I can't believe you haven't got my snail mail yet. Ah, well, the thing is, Marge, the place where you send your snail mail letters to is one of the places I work. Now, at Christmas, I'm not there. So the next time I'm there is next Thursday. So if you've sent a letter, it may be there then. Uh, Wendy, I think, sent something, but she's not sure if that's there now either. It's all very confusing. Very, very confusing indeed. Oh, good morning to James Dean. Good afternoon, James, who's with us again this week. James, could you tell your um, <laughs> your your other half the picture that he posted on the... Um, the picture I posted uh, a little while ago was not really for that sort of comment. Thank you. And when you, when, when you ask him, you'll look at it and you'll understand why and what the comment was. It's not really, not really available for comments like that. Thank you very much. And uh, Ben says, uh, I never thought I'd see you masticating on the telly. Masticating is the posh Royal Berkshire way of saying eating. Well, it might be posh. I don't do posh. You know that, dear. I don't do posh. Thank you. Now, let's see. A couple of other messages coming on the... Um, uh, where are we now? On the uh, on the Facebook. Sometimes people send messages on the phone. Uh, David. David says, hi, Chris. Are you doing a show today? Now, David saw this. So sent this on Facebook. Are you blind, David? We're here now, dear. Do you not actually see the wall? <sighs> Can't you see the wall? Oh, dear, dear me. Honestly. Um, good morning, Mark. Mark Whittle says, Lush have lip, lip scrub for your lips. What's Lush? Yeah, because I've got a little, little... Where it cut, it's kind of scabbed over. It's not one of those other things, or what they called. You know you get them on the lip? Um... Cold sore. It's not a cold sore. It's a cut, and I suppose where it, where I didn't clean it, it might have got a little bit of infection in there. Thank you, Mark. Lush. I don't know what Lush is. Good morning to Matt in Croydon. It says, hi, Chris, watching you live while getting ready for work. I'm full of cold and not feeling too well. What did... It says, farter Christmas. Farter Christmas. You need father Christmas, dear. Father Christmas. Although you have a lot of problem with that, don't you, Matt? Matt, I gather. With the wind area coming out of your rear. It must be what you eat, dear. It really must. Well, I showed you. I got that. Got a nice little pair of headphones from my niece. And a uh, few other nice little bits and pieces from people, yes. It's not the same as being a child, is it, when you're at Christmas? B boxes and bags of presents and all this business. But it, it, was, it, it was very nice. Oh, David, hang on a minute. Oh, David's got problem. Ah. Oh. Happy New Year from David on the Isle of Wight. He says, I'll be online in five minutes. Have a quick chat. OK. Oh, he's got problems with his, with his laptop. Try uh, restart and then try calling me. Yes, it'd be nice to have a little chat on the phone with someone today. Don't forget, uh, if you want to give us a Skype in, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, OK? Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. Or phone in, 20 8133 uh, Got to say thank you to Carl. Carl in Yorkshire. Duh, did, oh, have I got the Yorkshire music? One minute, one minute. Let's see if we've got that. We've got to have the Yorkshire music whenever we mention Yorkshire. Because no one, no one hears it. Here it is, here it is. Oh, there it is. So, ready? Here we go then. Yes. Hello to Carl in Yorkshire. Oh, I love those little bits of music. Who says, hope all things are good for me. Um, I can't read, read it word for word, but thank you for the audio that you sent me, Carl. And that was much appreciated. Send him the audio of, of, of something secret that I cannot mention, all right? Now, talking of audio and television and video things and all that as well, uh, Christmas, I've got to tell you, Christmas Day, I, we had a wonderful meal and all that business and the presents and the highlight of my Christmas was actually, I got there Christmas Eve at 10 o'clock at night 
I didn't work Christmas Eve this year. Um, I've worked in the same place for Christmas Eve for 10 years, actually. Uh, a friend's pub of mine. But it's been rather quiet there recently. And he hadn't sold any tickets for Christmas Eve. And I thought, you know... And, and also, the room... The, the pub is actually in two parts. It's like a function room and a main pub. <coughs> And he said, um, well, if if you, you're going to have to set up at the end of the bar instead of in the function. Room. So why is that? He said, well, it's just not going to be busy enough. We've sold no tickets. So he was very worried it was going to be um, quiet and a bit of a waste of time. And I thought, oh, you know, I mean, do we really want to do this? And I thought, he's saying that. I don't think he really wants me to come and do it. So um, it got to the day before Christmas Eve. And I said, look, why don't we just leave this? I said, I, I don't think your heart's in it. Mine isn't in it. My heart wasn't in it because I knew I was pretty sure it was going to be a bit of a dud night. And, you know, to start off Christmas with a dud night, you don't really want that. It's just one of those things, you know, a lot of pubs in the UK have been getting quiet and closing down. His pub's gone quiet. It's been quiet for a while now. So we decided not to do it. So I ended up going up to my sister's early. I got there about half past ten. And usually she goes to midnight mass. But she's been so busy. Um, her uh, mother-in-law lives with them as well. And she looks after them. She has to have, you know, the, the full-time look-after thing. You know, cleaning, feeding, taking to the bathroom. All of that. My sister does all of that. And she says, I'm too tired to go, Chris. She said, I've, got, I've been doing all the Christmas stuff and all that business. Um, so she wasn't going to go. I thought, oh, no, you know, I want to go up there to Midnight Mass. I got there, and guess what? My nephew Jimmy came with me to Midnight Mass. And he goes usually every year uh, with the family as well. I think they're going to sneeze in a minute. They're going to sneeze. Oh. <coughs> oh. <coughs> hey. I usually sneeze three times. Do you? Why sneeze? Why do I sneeze? Three? Why does everyone sneeze three times? Don't know that. Anyway, so my nephew, and that for me was my highlight of the time up at my sister's, going to midnight mass with my nephew. How fantastic was that? See, because I know we we don't get into the discussion of religion and all that business on there, but I am Catholic, and I like to do. I go to church on Sundays, right? And there's certain things I like to do within my religion. I don't stick to it as you should do. I don't stick to it by the book. You know, I, 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 we, we, he says it's not the right thing to do, but I don't. Um, and I was able to go to my with my nephew to Midnight Mass, which was actually at the Church of England, <coughs> which is a much larger church. And the reason is the Catholic one didn't have a Midnight Mass up there. A lot of them don't do midnight masses anymore. So I went up to midnight mass and we had the carols and the readings and my nephew standing next to me. I mean, I cannot explain to you how fantastic I felt because of that. Because the last time I went to midnight mass, it was my mum. I was standing with my mum. It's only me that really goes to church now. No, I don't, none of the other family do. My um, auntie Brenda... She was my mum's sister. She still goes to church. And my auntie Shirley and John in Australia, they go to church. And I think that's it. So it's always, you know, sometimes I go to church and I think, oh, I wish, you know, there was someone who, who came next to me, you know, would, would come next to me. And he did. Uh, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So that was it. And then Christmas morning, I went to the Catholic church, which is a very, very small place. And I was in there. And when I go to church, I tend to sit at the front. And um, I'm sitting there and I thought, well, I don't know anyone here, you know, because I'm in a diff different town. And while I'm up there, um, one of my sister's uh, uh, friends was, was, was walked past. I didn't know it was her. All I saw was this big white coat walk past and do a candle. And she brushed against me, turned around and said, sorry. Oh, Chris. Oh, how are you, Chris? Are you sitting on your own? Oh, hang on a minute. Tess, come up here. We're sitting here today. And immediately, three people came and sat next to me in the Catholic Church on the Christmas morning. Fantastic. 10 o'clock in the morning. And we got a free sweet as well afterwards. After the Mass, the priest was standing at the back giving out sweets. He had a big tin of um, heroes, I think it was. And he gave one sweet to everyone. He put a sweet in my hand. I looked at him as you know, as if to say, "One, you tight old git." 
<laughs> I, I, I had a good mind to put my hand in into the into the into the tub and take a whole handful out. Just a few, just a couple. Very disappointed. Um, where were we going with that story now? Oh, that's it. I've lost it now, haven't I? Lost the plot now. Well, I can't remember what we're talking about now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Christmas Day, we've had the dinner. <clears throat> Doctor Who on the telly. Okay, so I'm trying to watch this Doctor Who, and my nephew Gary and his brother-in-law Ben talked all the way through it. Or oh, oh, I was really, well, I've nearly swore then. Really, oh well, I will swear. I was really pissed off actually. <laughs> Chat, 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 and they weren't talking quietly, loud. Gary is standing, is sitting next to me on the settee. Chat, 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 all the way through Doctor. You couldn't turn it up <clears throat> because uh, Doreen, who's the nan, she was moaning that the telly was too loud because she was sitting right next to it. So you couldn't turn it up, and I'm kind of trying to hold my ear and direct it towards the telly, so I could hear the bloody thing. Chat, chat, chat. I didn't say anything. Don't say anything. You know, don't want to upset anyone. Don't say anything. Watch it when you get home, and that's what I had to do. In fact, I watched the end of it, the end of Doctor Who, just before I came up to chat to you today. For I had all the computer problems this morning, so I got. I managed to get there in the end. Fantastic. What a fantastic episode of Doctor Who. But what a shame that I couldn't hear it on Christmas Day, dear. Chat, 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 chat. Downton Abbey. I went down for Downton Abbey. They had something else on. Nothing. What was he watching? Was Oh, it was, um, it was my sister's husband. He was watching some bloody... Like one of those paranormal shows. You know, on Christmas Day. Downton Abbey. We need Downton Abbey. We need Doctor Who. Please. We need Christmas-type films, not paranormal activity, or carry-on films. All morning, Sharon and my sister had carry-on films on. How old are they? I like carry-on films, but on Christmas Day you want something a bit Christmassy, doesn't it? Something like Mrs Miracle, that's a good one. Or A Christmas Carol, something like that. Dear me. Um... <laughs> Stop moaning, Chris. James says, what did he post? I can't see anything on Facebook. Did you lead it? Yes. It wasn't rude. It wasn't rude, James. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just explain it private. Well, everyone's wondering now what he posted, aren't you? Um, just a minute. There we are. There you are, James. There you are. That's what that's what happened there. So I had to delete that little post. I'm sure you understand, dear. <coughs> um, let's have a look. Marge says, sad you could not do that midnight mass with your own son too. Yes, well, that's never going to happen, Marge. You have to accept things for how they are, and then otherwise you just go absolutely mad. You know, you, there, there are things in my life now. In the last few years, I've I've accepted certain things will not happen, and that's one of them. So there we are. Uh, Marge says she loves the new Pope. He is really changing how the church does in the world more poor, for the poor and such. Yes, yes, yes. I think the new Pope is um uh, very very um very very different, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, I know James. I know he didn't realise, so that's okay. Now talking of James's. There's another uh, email here from James Bates, regular correspondent to the show, who writes, Hi, Chris. Hope that Christmas goes OK for you. You have started me on a rant on changes. I feel companies like Apple are the worst offenders for this. Sorry, but they say we have changed to things like iTunes and it's nothing significant. It's gratifical changes. Oh, yes, I know no, what, what he means there. You know, uh, uh, I just explain. James is talking about the, uh, how iTunes keeps changing and how annoying it is because you get, re get you get used to a bit of software and then they bloody change it again. It's like operating systems. Who actually likes Windows 8? No, you don't, do you? Windows 8. I hate it. 
I hate it. But fortunately, with the update, you can at least now boot direct to desktop, which I've what, what I've arranged uh, my uh, work laptop to do. Things like iCloud are making it awkward to use, which shouldn't be the case. Why not wait and make big changes and start making it easier for people to use? Well, yeah, you know, th th they do. They change the interface, don't they? The way that you actually see how the program works. And it's very, very annoying. Very annoying. Glad to see uh, Fag Ashley was getting better. Yes, because uh, Fag Ashley wasn't uh, well recently. She's getting better slowly. There's been a lot of illnesses about lately. I don't think these storms have been helping much either. The floods and trees came down where I am at the moment, um, and the winds are going to return. I hear you haven't been had it bad where you are, from James. We have. Oh, it's been very windy here. And we, at the moment, we seem to have had storm after storm after storm. Nothing like you get, Marge, with your, um, uh, not hurricanes, tornadoes. We don't get tornadoes in it. Well, we do occasionally, but very, very rare. You know, but we've been an awful lot of storms recently. A hell of a lot of storms. Really has been. Uh... Let me see where we go in now. Right. <laughs> James, you are funny, dear. <laughs> I quite like having these one these one way conversations that I sometimes I have with someone, you know, if they might send in a message and I give you the reply on here, but you don't actually get the, the question because I can't read the question because that'll give, give away what we're talking about. That's quite nice. It's like like a mysterious thing that, isn't it? Mysterious girl Mysterious girl Peter Andre. Oh god, how boring is he? Why do they keep putting him on the telly? Peter Andre. And his sad, lonely, pathetic life. Is it just like a, a different version of this show, perhaps? <laughs> um, good. Now, where's my bit of paper that I was reading off? <coughs> I've just chucked that away. Have I? There it is. <coughs> uh, yes, yeah, so we've done that. Oh, New Year's Eve! New Year's Eve, anyone around Coventry New Year's Eve? Because I should be working at Rainbows in Coventry on New Year's Eve, 10pm to 3am. All the music's ready. I, well, I say all the music. The 20 minutes, I, 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 I prepare 20 minutes. 10 minutes before midnight, Big Ben, and around about 10 minutes after the midnight. So at 10 to I hit a button and then it's all, all cared for and hopefully nothing will go wrong. So that's uh, already. <clears throat> I did turn down uh, a gig yesterday. I, I rarely, rarely turn down gigs. But uh, one was offered me New Year's Day. And it was a daytime gig. So it would have been a lunch or something like that for, for some corporate event. And they wanted me there. At, uh, I would have had to be in London at 11.30. Well, if I'm in Coventry the day before... Um, then what would happen there? I'd be in Coventry... Uh, till three o'clock. I probably leave there three fifteen. I'm not back here till about five. So I was five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would have had to get up again at half past eight. Three hours later, you know, at breakfast, a shower, and then leave again for a job at half past eleven. And I thought to myself, oh no, it was only they were offering one hundred and thirty pounds for that, which is good for you know a day's work, but not after New Year's Eve. Oh God, there'd be nothing left of me. It's just not worth it. You know, not not worth the time and effort there. Uh, uh, my next big thing is the holiday in Florida, where I'm taking my nephew Jimmy on holiday soon to Florida, and as luck would have it, the exchange rates, pound to dollar, are extremely good at the moment. And I told Jimmy that last week. I said, Jimmy, change your money now. The exchange rates are really good, and he's done that. And for 300 and th what did he pay um i think he paid 330 pounds and i'll tell you in a minute oh it's my sister or oh, she might tech no she sent it on the text on the phone for 330 pounds he got 500 dollars so i think that's a pretty good exchange rate so i should be changing mine up probably uh next week i might just start to wait a little bit longer perhaps they might go up even more um, and uh, all that. Righty-ho, then. Um, 
Let's read this uh, long message now from Marge, who says, uh, I think we'll finish it up on this. Okay. Yeah. Marge. Uh, oh, by the way, karaoke tonight, uh, Saturday, the 28th of December 2013. If you're in the London area, I'm hosting karaoke tonight at the Lorry Arms in Hammersmith. Okay. The Lorry Arms in Hammersmith. March says, just seeing, uh, I'm glad you had a good week this Christmas for Christmas with your sister and her family and Stacy. I had the cold bug. Yes, I saw that, Marge. <clears throat> you weren't too well, were you? I had the cold bug all week, as you know, but I'm now doing better. We had an ice freeze before that <clears throat> and electric went down for about two hours. Oh, Marge, there's been people here with um, no electricity for a few days because we've had a lot of flooding terrible really it was really beautiful however um if it was not so cold i uploaded some photos on my facebook page oh did you let me have a quick look at those marge let me see if i can get a get a um uh i don't think i can do that now no i don't think i can do that now marge so no i can't do that now my darling um I guess you will tell us what you got for Christmas. Yes, I did. I got two vice grips, twin sheets, $30 cash, some all sorted gloves, $20 Walmart card and $160 total Christmases bonuses from the house I cleaned for. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? When you get a bonus from the place that you work at. I just think that's really nice, yeah. Several nice cards, and I'm still going to make that T-shirt with your face printed on it and the United Kingdom talk show uh, address on it as soon as spring arrives to advertise your show. I have to find a local custom T-shirt place here that makes them. T-shirts. I'll make an inquiry about T-shirts, I think. I'll leave that to me for a minute, but Marge. The other night I heard coyotes out in my backyard. Oh, where's the coyotes again? One minute. Where's the coyotes? Is it this one? It's the coyotes again. <laughs> where's the little thing I love the coyote noises. It's like from a horror film, isn't it? Oh, I just realised I've still got a little uh, thing to play from, uh, from uh, John yet, so that's still to come. Uh, other night I heard coyotes out in my backyard so very loud that I looked out and about five of them were about 50 feet from my house. Do they attack people, coyotes, or not? Do they attack? They have the weirdest yelling sound they make. Do you have coyotes there? No, none. None. None at all here. I attach the sound they make, which you've heard. Well, this is just a short note this time because I don't want to hog the time for others. I'm really liking the daily videos you're making. Yes, once again, boys and girls, you can find those daily videos at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You might get adverts now before. I'm not quite sure how the advert thing works. <clears throat> but YouTube have started putting some adverts on there as well. So um, if you do... hope. You know, I don't know what that's like. I have no idea because when I look, I can't I don't see the adverts because I am the owner of that site. If you see what I mean, Do you see. So only people that don't own the site will see them. Um, did my commenting about your intro videos help you to decide on doing those? Yes. Yes. Yes, it did. And also, Marge, your comment about the back background also prompted me to change it to what it is now. I've got a blue background now. OK, which I can change. You know, the material was actually quite cheap on eBay. It's not dear at all. So I could change that throughout the year. Maybe we'll have a red or our favourite colour, Marge, mauve, because we like mauve or maybe green, something like that. It did make me feel good that maybe some of my suggestions work for you, just like that background you picked was just perfect colour <clears throat> and not seem that like I'm being critical of the show. No, no, you make com you can uh, always make uh, suggestions if you want to. And in fact, uh, the Minicam, you remember you, you introduced me to Minicam, which allows me to switch to different things just by pushing a button like this. You know, and this, which is the worst Christmas tree ever in the entire history. That's the Trafalgar Square Christmas tree. Awful. Absolutely awful. 
I'm still doing a catch up of your old shows. I may be in my 90s before I'm done. <laughs> Till next time, Marge, your next door and over the ocean neighbour, Oklahoma Hillbilly. Funny you should mention old shows, Marge. I was actually um, last night looking through a few old shows, and my God, I look look a lot um, uh, a lot uh, a lot younger there. I do look a lot younger there. Apparently, Wendy has put me on pause. She's uh, put me on. Wendy has put me on pause. What a bloody cheek! I am paused. How dare you pause me? <laughs> She's got to go and get her husband some lunch, or we'll watch the rest of the show in a bit. <laughs> I hope you haven't paused me, have you, James? Dear me. <laughs> Marge says, coyotes don't attack you. They are afraid of humans. All right. Can you feed? Do you feed them? I bet you feed them, Marge. You'd be the sort of person that feed them. So would I, actually. Only reason they might do that is if, if that they, could, they are in a corner and can't get away. They can kill your small pets. Oh, I don't see adverts because of my ad blocking. Free ad on for Firefox browser. Oh, OK. So there's a free um, ad blocker for Firefox if you want to do that. OK, last thing on the show today, we've got a, a nice rant from Cyber John. Who's, uh, he's not been too well recently. He's a lot better now. So let's see what Cyber John has got to say to us all on this Saturday afternoon. Hi Chris, and a belated Merry Christmas to all your listeners. Christmas, of course, can be great for some people, and awful for others. One homeless man was sitting outside Tesco's, so I bought him a few things and put them in his lap. By the way, I usually never polish my halo in public like this. Anyway, he asked me, what's this? Food, says I. I don't eat meat, he replied. But I wasn't phased by this and pointed out the Eccles cakes that I provided for him. I started striking up a conversation saying obvious things like, it's a bit cold isn't it? And pointlessly, how are you doing? I know that talking to people, giving them your time is more appreciated than just food. Three homeless people told me that. Now, I know that Jesus, when his feet were being anointed with expensive unguents, said to his irate apostles who wanted to sell the oil for money to give it to downtrodden, he said, there will always be the poor, but the Son of Man must be glorified, as Jesus wasn't going to be around for much longer. And if you want to understand why Jesus allowed that, well, go online and it's there you'll find there's a very profound reasoning behind it. But excluding the professional beggars i am convinced that this dreadful situation could be at best reduced in scale by our government but the political will is not there quite simply the homeless do not have the vote but it's been done before at the end of the weimar republic in the early 1930s the national socialists eradicated the issue by providing work and accommodation i call it an issue because i don't want to call it a problem because the homeless aren't a problem, they are something we should be ashamed of in the 21st century. I don't for an instant condone the methods of the Germans in those days, and there was certainly no understanding of support for those on the streets with mental issues and drug dependencies. I have never met anyone in that situation who has not had such problems. We have in this time the resources, the infrastructure and the understanding, but not the will. I believe Boris has dedicated some of his effort to the people on the streets in our capital, where the issue has been historically massive. The actions of Searchlight and the brilliant Big Issue have been a lifeline to the homeless. By the way, the Big Issue sellers have to purchase their magazines and sell them on for half of the profits. Now what I tend to do is give them the money anyway, and not take a magazine. This means they have another magazine to sell, and to be honest, I'm not going to read something with a left-wing bias. And it's all about youth bands and things. You know, I mostly stopped listening to any bands who came after 1995. Arctic Monkeys, I'd rather sleep on the streets. And I have. It was the second worst experience of my life. And I'm not making light of it. Okay. So... The government are sitting on their warm hands, not on pieces of cardboard. And the charities and volunteers take up the slack, whilst Cameron waxes lyrical about a big society. I think he should shut up. 
It doesn't mean anything. Some uncivil servant invented the term. They say you can judge a society on how it treats its prisoners. Rubbish. Prisoners have food and a roof over their heads. You can truly judge a society on how it treats the down and outs. Mother Teresa said it was not the worst thing to be rejected by others. It was when no one thinks about you at all. Going back to that homeless man, I immediately thought when he said he was a vegetarian and wouldn't take the chicken pies that I'd offered, he had the spark of humanity and he was sticking to his principles even though he's probably very hungry. You know, it's implicit that Christians don't go to heaven because of good acts that we perform. Those good acts are just a symptom of being Christians or Muslims or whatever. When you are on the streets, the opportunity to do good is limited. When you are a London banker, the possibilities of charitable enterprises are endless. But being rich, even moderately so like you and I, creates a great gulf between them and us, and we should cross it. Finally, have you heard? Advent calendars are going to be withdrawn from sale next year. I guess their days are numbered. Ad <laughs> oh, I get it. Advent. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Cyber John. Yes, I, I can't think of anything worse than... Uh, there is, of course, things worse. But sleeping on the streets... Bad enough in the summer, isn't it? Can you just imagine what it would be like now to sleep on the streets? Admittedly, it's not really got that cold yet. Of course it's cold outside now, but it's not really freezing cold yet. We've probably still got that to come maybe end of January, February. They tend to be the sort of coldest months in the UK. But sleeping on the streets is a, a, a terrible thing. It really is. Thank you for that, Cyber John. Uh, totally agree with you about music. I don't think there's been anything good out since ABBA split up, other than other Barry Manilow songs, which I shall be going to see him in a couple of weeks' time. I can't wait. That's it for the show today. Thanks very much for watching and listening, boys and girls. Uh, don't forget, I shall be, with, be back with you live here uh, next Saturday the 4th of January 2014 at 12 o'clock UK time all right and that will be the last live show until my holiday so it's all very very exciting it's all happening boys and girls if you're wondering where to find us live simply go to <coughs> unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk look at the top and right at the top there um, in the at the top of the first post at the top there, uh, you'll find a direct link to where you can find our live shows every Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. Uh, once again, find the short videos. You'll find those at chrisreardon.com, sorry, at youtube.com forward slash UK. Click subscribe there and uh, you'll get the new videos as they come out every day. We do a short little video. OK, Robin says, great show. Speak soon. Yep, you're going. So am I, Robin. Thanks so much for watching and listening. And don't forget the email address. Join in by email at any time. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you've never, ever written before, be lovely to hear from you, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. See you soon. Bye-bye.